Hello, hello folks, all Twit Talks cars here. Hope you're well, hope you're enjoying the sunshine that I can see out of my loft window. Uh, and I'm pleased to be with you again. And this is episode seven, can you believe it, of Old Twit's pre-classic predictions. Now today is a car that I absolutely adore, never had one, would be delighted to have one if anyone wants to donate one to an old fellow. Uh, and that's the Fiat Coupe, a beautiful, beautiful thing. So uh, lots of information to follow. Let's jump straight into it and get on with business. So the Fiat Coupe is a two-door, four-seat coupe, obviously manufactured and marketed by Fiat between 1993 and 2000 across a single generation. So there was no re-faced uh, versions of these. Coupe was first introduced at the Bologna Motor Show in December 93 and is noted for its distinctive angular exterior design by Chris Bangle. The interior of the car was designed by Pininfarina, our old friends that are featured on this little series on a number of occasions in different cars. Fiat had decided to produce a new coupe based upon the Tipo platform when the Pininfarina factory was suddenly dormant after the Cadillac Alanti project failed in around 1990. Two designs were put forward with Fiat's in-house Centro Stile team competing with Pininfarina and the concept put forward by Centro Stile's Chris Bangle unexpectedly won the Fiat management over. The design previously offered by Pininfarina was accepted by Peugeot, who adopted it as the 406 Coupe in October 96, and we've already covered the beautiful 406 Coupe in this series. On its launch, the Coupe was available with four cylinders, two litre, 16 valve engine in both turbo and normally aspirated versions. Both engines were later versions of Fiat's twin cam design and inherited from the Lancia Delta Integrale, winner of the World Rally Championship a record six times, so not a bad pedigree. In 1996, along came a two litre, five cylinder, 20 valve engine in both normally aspirated and turbo versions with the normal 20 valve version giving 147 PS and the turbo version giving a very competitive 220 PS. It also made some minor design changes including the front grille, steering wheel, the door panels now included leather and the interior centre console was redesigned and the digital clock was replaced with an analogue one so that's a good way to tell exactly what year your car is. Both the turbocharged 16 valve and the 20 valve five cylinder cars were, were equipped with a very efficient Visco Drive limited slip differential to counter the understeer that plagues most powerful front wheel drive cars. Additionally, the coupe featured independent suspension all round at the front, McPherson struts and lower wishbones anchored to an auxiliary cross beam, offset coil springs and anti-roll bar at the rear. 1998 saw the release of the limited edition, which could be identified externally by a body kit, titanium grey details such as wheels, fuel cap, rear light cups, mirror casings, and the Brembo brake calipers at the front were now painted red. Inside the limited edition specification included a push button start, Recaro seats with red leather inserts, Sparco pedals, and the recognizable body colored dash was replaced with a titanium grey example. Mechanically, there were very few changes over a standard 20 valve turbo model. But the LE, as they came to be known, did add a six speed gearbox for the first time, strut brace, and the engine covers were all painted red. Each limited edition coupe was manufactured with a badge located by the rear view mirror which contained that car's unique number. It's rumoured that Michael Schumacher was the original owner of LE number no. 1. Originally a spokesman from Fiat stated only approximately 300 limited editions would be built although the plaques always allowed for four figure numbers. The final amount was much higher with numbers as high as 1400 touted by some. This angered many of the owners the original 300 cars and almost certainly impacted residual values. In 
In terms of things to watch out for with this little beauty, uh, camshaft wear is often an issue on 16 valve engines, so it's worth checking the oil pressure on those. The turbo is sensi sensitive to decat exhaust, overboosting, sloppy cooling down practice. Watch for smoking from cold when idle. Check the 20 valves rear coolant hose because it can let go without warning. Inspect the engine for leaks because the head gasket is so strong that it refuses to fail, causing problems elsewhere. Ensure the oil cooler pipe isn't corroded. Cam belt changes are every 35,000 miles on the 16 valve turbo and 50,000 miles on the 20 valve and should always include the water pump. Check for a cracked exhaust manifold. Steering suspension and brakes, nose heavy design, strains the front wishbone bushes while dampers leak and springs crack. Listen for clonking from failing bump stops and noisy rear wheel bearings. Electrics were generally reliable, which is quite unusual, um, but fan and heater resistor failure is not unknown. In terms of bodywork, the 16 valve wasn't galvanised and the pillars and floor pan rotted out. The 20 valve was galvanised, but the past couple of years have shown rust emerging on sills on earlier cars and floor pans on later cars. Examine the boot floor and the front wheel arches for rust. Boot seals perish and allow water in. It's also worth knowing that the so-called coolant hose of death is behind the engine near the bulkhead and difficult to check. Trouble is it can fail. Because of the temperature sensor's location in the cooling system, it doesn't know the catastrophe is imminent. The clamshell bonnet traps the escaping steam so all appears well. Replace that hose as a precaution. So a quick look at our old friend howmanyleft.co.uk shows us this. So as we like, they're all on one page, which is great. And they're relatively easy to understand, unlike some in terms of the various iterations of model. So as you remember, there weren't that many different models and there was only one generation of cars. So that always helps to make this process a little bit easier. So uh, in terms of the cars that are left and are available to us, uh, I've marked this up a little bit to make it easier because sometimes it's not that clear. So what we find is we've got a total of 740 cars left in the UK today on the roads. Uh, and here are the various iterations of uh, power and output. Um, so that's all pretty clear. So well within our thousand model remaining ceiling. So Fiat Coupe into eBay cars now. Uh, whilst we like to go in and see the sold ones as you know i did want to just show you what's for sale at the moment because i think some of these are aspirational prices for a car potentially that you could pick up within our criteria so 6995 these are 20 valve turbos that's clearly the one that's in most demand and probably most available uh one here 5950 6995 so i think the potential for me is if you pick one up at under 2k i think it will need to be close to 2k to make it the right sort of car spend a bit of time and money on it i do expect that you could be up in these numbers so frankly if you bought one for two grand and even if you spent 1500 quid on it and you were able to achieve these type of numbers then uh you know everyone's a winner so that was just that one so let's quickly skip down to sold cars there's one i want to show you which i think is right in our wheelhouse in terms of the type of cars that are available and potentially that you should be looking for now some of these that are sort of a grand i think potentially have got a few problems but it was this one that caught my eye so this is a 20 valve turbo sold for two thousand pounds on the nose so just right on the cusp of our criteria 15 bids so lots of activity based in london now i'm not normally a lover of a green car but i believe this is called forest green this color and although it looks a bit 
bit misty there on the bonnet. I do love the colour of this car, particularly with the tan leather. I think it looks absolutely awesome. So let's have a quick scoot through the through the pictures. Uh, got the Brembo's, nice wheels look like they've been looked after or refurbed. Uh, I love the interior on these cars. I just think they're epic. Um, there's lots of nice details here that you'll see in some of the uh, other footage I put up. But look, there's the little uh, 20 valve turbo uh, markings there. Tires look good. There are a few scrapes and scratches on this car, which I guess are only to be expected. Um, and they're the sort of things I think for a two grand car that you could spend a bit of time and money on just fettling, not re repainting, but just treating locally and get a great result here. Yeah, I mean, I love how they have the um, body colour through the dash here. Uh, I love the leather. Typically, this leather's not been looked after that well. I wouldn't worry at all. As long as there's not holes, I wouldn't worry about the cracks and, and scratches because they can easily be dealt with. But yeah, it all looks good here. These have the um, light carpet as well, which I quite like. Not that practical, but I like the look of for sure. You see the big difference between the passenger seat and the driver's seat. Um, so there's no reason, as long as they're not holes there, that you couldn't make that seat look like this with a tiny bit of work and a bit of effort. Fiat 20 valve turbo, it's not really had a lot of love under there. So again, that would be very easy and that would only be time expended to make that look cracking under there. You could deal with all this, all this um, easy to do at home. Uh, you've got some lacquer issues there. That's a little bit harder to deal with, but it might be worth taking that to your local uh, paint shop and seeing what they could do locally to that to keep your costs under control. So I think if you've got this paintwork looking absolutely pristine, I think it's such a strong colour that that would really uh, boost your chances with this car. And you've got the same issue there on the boot. Scratches and scrapes, you might be able to get to those with some cutting compound, but they might be too deep. But again, uh, I think you could probably take this to a proper uh, local body shop that, um, you know, has a sensible view of the world and they could give you a decent uh, estimate on dealing with that. Scratches there. I mean, they're, they're nothing that would scare me off, frankly. Little dent there. They're easy to pop out. Uh, so that all looks straight and nice on there. Um, so this is the 97 Scott screen, tan leather, 20 valve, 93,000 miles. Just serviced an MOT today, so it's got a year's MOT on it. Uh, used daily, it's had a cam belt and water pump at 77,000 miles. So you've got a bit of um, leeway there. Uh, full silicon hose kit, because there is, as you heard um, in my spiel earlier, there is an issue potentially with the coolant hose, which can be a problem. So he's dealt with that, which is great. Be, be, be rebuilt by Midland Turbo, October 2017, regularly serviced and he's had cold start switch, idle control valve, airflow meter, thermostat done, he's got two keys, it's HPI clear, um, can be insured via classic car insurance dependent on your mileage uh, and that's going to be great value for you. Uh, mechanically it's all over, it's all in good condition. Amazing to drive, gets lots of attention wherever it goes, I'm not surprised. So I think for our two grand budget, that's a car that you could spend some time and money on. I mean, frankly, I'm not sure, probably apart from the paint, you'd struggle to spend 1500 quid on that car. So even if you did, that's gonna owe you three and a half grand. I think that car in six months time, or maybe early next year, is gonna fetch 5995, 6495 something like that so you know if that's not a better investment than sticking your money in the building society or under your mattress then i don't know what is so i hope you found that of interest um i'd love to hear your comments and suggestions in the comments below um please also suggest cars that you think should be covered here and i'd be happy to have a look at it for you uh likewise please subscribe if this sort of thing's of interest there are um more of these coming down the track and i try and get one up every 
uh, weekend and sometimes two. I did two last week. Amazing. Let's jump into the scoring, the really important bit. So let's go. Oh, like I've suggested here, I think you're going to need to be right at the top of our two grand um, ceiling here to get the right sort of car with a little bit of scope in it for you. So in terms of cost, I guess that's got to be a three, hasn't it? Because, you know, you're going to spend all of the budget, I think, to get a car uh, like this. In terms of mileage, I'm surprised to see that there are cars out there that have done 150,000 miles and still going strong. So I think that underlines the strength of these engines if they're looked after properly, and particularly the hose issue that owners talk about, the hose of death or whatever it is. So that's something you need to have a look at. But yeah, in terms of mileage, uh, they are a bit higher mileage, I guess, um, than I expected. And I think that underlines the usability of these cars. So I think for mileage, we're gonna give it a five. Rarity, well, they're well within our um, thousand or so ceiling for rarity. So it was 740, I think. And, you know, that, that drops every year, that number. So they're only going one way. So I think that's good. I think they're um, nicely rare, but not so rare that they're going to cause you problems. So for rarity, it's going to get a seven. So for plus factor, where do I start? I think the 20 valve turbo, A, it goes great. I think the handling's meant to be really good if the uh, suspension's been looked after. Um, I mean, it's a beautiful thing. That green uh, one with the tan leather, I think, uh, looked an amazing car. I wish I'd seen that um, and had two grand going, going spare. So I think there's loads of plus factors here. The leather's good, the interior's grey. I think it's gonna turn heads wherever you go. It's gonna be great to drive. Um, yeah, I mean, it's Italian, it's it, it's a Ferrari uh, in a Fiat badge, in my view. So that gives it a nine, as far as I'm concerned. You know, I can't, uh, I can't be any more enthusiastic about these. In terms of usability, we're back to the issue of it's a two-door coupe, um, boots pretty small, I don't think you'd want to put people in the back unless you really hated them so not that practical however i think they are a daily driver i mean this guy's been using the green one we looked at he's been using daily continued to do so until he sold it so i think there's no issues with that and he lived in london so i think from a usability point of view we're going to go for a six so that gives the fiat coupe 30 overall and i think the only reason that's lower than i expected it to be is that i think the costs you know it's it's just about to jump out of our um, our two grand uh, budget criteria. Um, so inevitably those cars are at the very top end. So inevitably I've had to score it down on cost. I think again, there are quite a lot more high mileage cars out there than I expected. And I think a really low mileage car is gonna be out of our budget. However, I do reiterate, I think this is a great car. If you've got a couple of grand spare, you're happy to spend time on it. You're happy to shop around for parts and get the little niggly stuff done. I think it's a great investment. I think in a year, you'll be trying to find me in any town and shaking me firmly by the hand and thanking me, let's hope so, not shaking me by the neck. Um, so get involved. Watch my channel for more of these coming down the track. Let me have your comments. Thumbs up would be great. Subscription would be even better. And I look forward to seeing you 